Cagliostro is a very versatile character with a number of viable ways to play between her different combo routes and strong damage and supportive capabilities. She also has great ways to reposition herself to keep herself safe while keeping up pressure on the enemy and can have a surprisingly fast-paced playstyle depending on how you want to approach her, whether focusing on getting your cooldowns up faster or maximizing her damage as much as possible. Truth be told, it can be a bit hard to tell exactly which combo routes are always the best for her, but in this guide I'll do my best to give advice on when to use each combo route for the most success. In this video, I want to discuss Cagliostro, talk about her strengths and weaknesses, discuss general playstyle and setup, and showcase some practical use in harder raid fights. As per usual, I'll be making character guides on everyone, so if you do enjoy guide content on this game, RPGs in general, and especially Xenoblade, and are interested in seeing more, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much. And also, as usual, you can join my Discord in the description to keep up with video release announcements, or follow me on Twitter for the same thing. Let's get into it! So immediately upon looking at Kag's character screen, we can see that one of her support skills is Founder of Alchemy. This skill basically is what allows her to have four different potential combo finishers depending on how many normal attacks she uses before the combo finishers. And all of these have some potential use depending on the situation. In general, you also want to be linking these combo finishers into your Collapse, which is her second support skill, where the charge time of Collapse is greatly increased after a combo finisher. And as it is routed to the same button, all you have to do is hold down the button after the combo finisher until the attack charges up, then you can release for more damage. Now I know you may be thinking, in your score attack at the start you didn't even use Collapse. Well, it's a bit complicated, but in general it's worth getting into the habit of using it, and score attacks aren't the end-all be-all, but essentially one of her unique sigils reduces cooldowns a lot when landing combo finishers, and one of those skills can do a lot of damage to the dummy that isn't always as consistent on actual enemies, so generally it is worth using Collapse, especially if you have her other unique sigil, which we'll talk about later. As far as getting back to her combos, the first combo is just a single attack, into your combo finishers, or X into double Y on my layout, then charge Y afterward for collapse. This combo finisher essentially sends range spikes out of the ground that can be used to attack from a bit away compared to our other combo finishers, which can be nice if you want to keep your distance from enemies. There are two other major benefits of this finisher, though. The first is that against larger enemies, the spikes can hit multiple times very easily instead of only a couple times, like against the dummy, meaning that you can get a lot of damage out of something like this that would normally be one of your weaker options. And secondly, it's the fastest way to recharge your skill cooldowns if needed when combined with her unique sigil since it's your fastest combo finisher, which can be very good if you want to get certain skills up quicker. And this can potentially be a very high DPS option because of that. You can also get off collapse faster with this combo as well. All in all, if the enemy is large, this is always a combo worth doing, and it's great from range as well. The second combo is a scissor attack by pressing the attack button twice in a combo finisher. This one does the least amount of damage overall, but it does have an AoE around her, so while less useful for boss fights, it does have its place in other content, but for most late game raids, you'll avoid this one. Her third combo finisher is Saw Blades, which is three attacks into combo finishers. This does a lot of consistent damage and is usually quicker to perform than her last combo finisher, while not having that much less damage by comparison, which does have a lot of benefits such as aforementioned skill cooldowns and being able to jump back into combos quicker. It can also be nice for getting off a combo on mobile bosses without fully committing to a full combo. The saws don't have the greatest range, so you'll need to be in the enemy's face, but you can always dodge mid-combo to reposition, and dodging is actually really nice here between her third normal attack and saw, since they have a bit of lag on them otherwise, allowing you to get this combo off even faster. This is one of her best combos and one I like using a lot, which works better against small enemies compared to her first combo. Her fourth combo is Axis, which technically has the highest damage, and it's four attacks and the combo finishers. It also does the most stun damage, but it does take longer to do this combo even if you dodge cancel some of the laggier animations, and many boss timing windows may not give you ample time to perform the entire thing. It can be worth using in the right circumstances, but you are performing less combo finishers if you focus on this one a lot, so you have less skill cooldown as well, which could also be a DPS decrease in the long run, so it really depends on the situation in the fight and if you value the high stun power or immediate damage. All in all, her combos do all have use depending on the situation, and getting off as many combo finishers as you can will likely be the key to maximizing not only your damage, but your supportive abilities too. It can also be worth mentioning that her aerial finisher is actually pretty solid damage as well if you can use it properly, but I'm not personally a fan of using it myself, but some people have made it work for pretty high DPS. As mentioned, you can combo collapse out of all of these combo finishers, that is typically what you're going to want to be doing, unless you really need to rush skill cooldowns, since collapse doesn't count as a combo finisher. However, it's usually just safest to do this, especially because the attack will usually still connect even if the boss jumps away because of the range, and it still gives pretty solid damage. That should cover the very basics of the character and her combos. More detailed info will be in other sections. Let's get into the setup. Alright, so setup. 
As you might expect, the Terminus Weapon is going to be your best bet if you actually have the drop for the Terminus Weapon. Catastrophe is a fantastic bonus effect, 100% extra damage cap, 50% extra attack when you're below 45,000 health. Run this if you have it. Sigil Boost is a great trade as well, boosts the uh, abilities of all your other traits. Very, very good effect to have. If you don't have this crit rate weapon, uh, max out Ascension Weapon will work just fine, although Chris crit rate might be a little bit less efficient on her compared to other characters because of one of her skills, but we'll talk about that a bit more later. So, uh, in the run you saw at the beginning of the video, I was not running one of these traits, actually, her two unique sigil traits. Founder's Strategy, I was not running, but I do recommend it for more general casual play, because this inflicts defense down whenever you land a fully charged collapse on foe, and it's pretty easy to keep applied at all times. Now, most of the time, your allies will probably be hitting cap on a lot of moves, and you might be as well, depending on your setup, but this is still a pretty decent effect. Sometimes, uh, not everyone will be hitting cap on everything. Sometimes, people may not have the absolute greatest setups you might run into online, unless you're in coordinated team play. So, this can still be a nice effect to have. Now, if you're in a coordinated team and you know they're hitting caps on literally everything, or they might be with one of your other skill buffs, then you may not even need to run this. You might be able to run something else and get more benefit out of it. But this is still a pretty okay sigil to have equipped if you've got nothing else to equip. And then the better of the two unique abilities she has is Founder's Truth. This will reduce all skill cooldowns whenever you land a combo finisher by 3%. Absolutely incredible effect to have, because the more combo finisher you do, the more skills you'll be able to use, which is really beneficial for a character like her who gets a lot of high damage skills and a really great party-wide buff and with her skill set. So this is a really good effect, definitely something you should be running at all times. As far as the sub-traits on these, I've got Combo Booster. This is kind of a, uh, I didn't really have anything better to equip here, but it does work in some situations, even if you're already hitting cap on a lot of your abilities. One of your skills, which is a lot of damage, does not hit cap very easily, so this could still be a nice way to just boost the damage and make sure you're hitting cap on that. That's also why I'm running Skilled Assault as one of my imbued traits here, but this is mainly for the critical hit rate. And the Drain isn't bad as well, because you have a lot of multi-hits as CAG, so you get a lot of benefit out of Drain as well, especially when you're using your Saw Blades. That's a pretty good effect to have, it's just a way to kind of heal. So I thought that was a decent imbue to uh, give to her at the very least. There are definitely better options for it, but I don't really have anything that great. And the extra critical hit rate is nice to make sure you're always hitting a flat 80%, although with a certain skill, you can always hit 100%, so that's really nice. And then Guts is here, because Guts is just a really good, unique, universal ability in general. Gives you a chance to level 1 HP basically every two and a half minutes at this current level. So a really nice effect to have as well. Then I have my obligatory 4 damage cap 5 pluses to make sure I'm hitting damage cap on the highest amount of damage cap possible. And then the sub traits on them are Aegis. This is combined with Tyranny to make sure I'm having a pretty good maximum HP value while I'm still under 45,000 health. Potion Hoarder, pretty much the best effect in the entire game as far as a unique set of sub trait. You get a bunch of additional potions, increases your stock of recovery items. Definitely run this no matter what. Other sub traits I have are Cascade. This is a really nice sub trait to have just in general because it reduces skill cooldowns even further and using more skills is really nice. It does work a little weird on certain characters, but it is pretty nice for Cagliostro at the very least. And then we have Improved Dodge as well. This is a really nice uh, effect to have, especially when you're dodge canceling out of uh, your laggier attacks so you can get more combo finishers off faster. I think this is really good on Cagliostro for that reason as well. So those are the sub traits on the damage cap 5 pluses. Then I have my other obligatory supplemental damage 5s. With just two of these, you reach 74% chance to trigger 20% damage increase on basically everything, which is really nice to have. Even if there's no sub traits, because I'm not really lucky with that, it's still really nice to be able to run some of these to just get more benefit and more damage out of the character. Then I have one critical hit rate 5+. plus. Now, with only one of these, I'm only hitting 80% critical hit rate, but like I said, um, there's a way to increase this to 100% with one of her skills, which is really nice. And I have stamina attached to it, so I get a lot of benefit at maximum health to get a 51% attack bonus. Now, with all the attack boosters I have already, there is a bit of overkill, maybe, but one of, like I said, one of her skills takes a little bit to hit damage cap, and uh, her normal attacks will be basically hitting cap pretty easily most of the time, as long as you're max health. And if you're not at max health, you can still hit cap pretty easily. I didn't really know what else better to run in this situation, and I did want to level that extra critical hit rate at the very least. Then we have Tyranny. This is just the final guarantee here to make sure I'm hitting damage caps. Tyranny is a pretty nice effect to have, plus 20, 36% attack at the cost of minus 20% of your health. You can bypass this with Aegis to get more health, which is really nice. And Nimble Onslaught is the trait I have on here. I've actually come around on this trait a lot. I really like this trait. Uh, when you dodge attacks, you get skill cooldown, SPA gauge gain, and invincibility. Really nice effect to have for anyone who relies a lot on cooldown reduction and likes having Skybun Art gauge up and just wants extra invincibility in fights. It's a really nice sub trait to have. And then Link Together is also a really nice trait to have as well. It gives you more damage on your Link attacks, more Link level gain, which is the main benefit, and even more damage on your Scabbound Arts as well, and uh, chain damage, so that's really nice to have. I really like this effect. One of the best abilities in the game, just for general use, I would say, in general. 
And then we have quick cooldown as the sub trait on that gives even more skill cooldown so you can use your skills even more often. Her skills are really good, so this is a really nice effect to have. And finally, War Elemental can't have a sub trait, but just a great trait in general because it makes all your attacks count as a superior element, so you get a free 20% damage boost that bypasses the damage cap. You should pretty much be running this on everyone. As far as other sub traits, you could definitely consider something like Auto Revive for even more defensive utility, or maybe some more quick cooldowns if you can manage to fit them, or even another Limbo and Blonde slot. There's a lot of different options you could consider here. I just kind of like this setup. If you're able to, maybe fit three supplementary damage fives would be nice to have as well, but it can be a little difficult to fit all of those. But all in all, I think this is a pretty decent setup on her, but you can definitely kind of uh, maybe optimize it a bit more and maybe take a little bit less damage and still be hitting all those damage caps if or you're able to uh, kind of figure out what would be more beneficial. Maybe a stun damage over the tyranny or something like that would be kind of beneficial to have. So... Let's take a look at skills now, because she has a lot of very good skills that I want to talk about. The first is Pain Train. This is her main damage skill. This is the one that has the very high cap, and one you can get a lot of benefit out of. Nearly 2 million damage, maybe even more sometimes, if you're able to land all the hits of it. It also acts as an effective gap closer. This is just an amazing skill in general, I would say. It also has a really short cooldown, so you should absolutely be using this pretty much in every opportunity that you can to get the most benefit out of it. Because there's pretty much no reason not to because of the amount of damage it can do if you've got uh, the ability to hit the cap of the attack. Because it's just such a very powerful ability, something you should be running basically at all times, and a very, very good skill to have. And then we have Alexandria, the summons an Ouroboros to launch foes into the air. This usually won't work on bigger boss enemies or anything like that. And honestly, launching foes in the air can be a little bit annoying anyway. But it still does a pretty decent amount of damage. And the other benefit is that you can immediately charge Collapse afterwards, some additional damage from that as well, which can be very nice to have. So it's a pretty nice damaging ability if you just want to run more damage on her kit. Then we have Mimic Doll. This is a dodge backward ability that also places an explosive bomb of Cavagliostro replica where she used to be standing, essentially. So you're able to also charge Collapse faster after this attack as well to get additional damage out of that. And it also is a nice way to reposition yourself to get away from an enemy that's about to attack you or something like that if you want to kind of position yourself backwards. So it's a pretty nice ability for that alone. And then we have Phantasmagoria. This is probably the best ability she has. This is just a universal buff to attack, defense, and critical hit rate. It basically allows you to have 100% critical hit rate without actually having 100% critical hit rate. It can boost your damage so you don't always have to be running full damage to hit damage caps. And the defense up is just universally useful for everyone as well to uh, take less damage from attacks. This is such a fantastic party-wide buff in general. Now, in coordinated team play, a lot of people might have 100% critical hit rate and might be hitting caps on basically everything in general, so maybe a little bit less useful there. But in with randoms, and if also if your team knows that you're bringing this, they can kind of optimize their setup around it. Now, it is a little hard to have 100% uptime if you're not just spamming the, the uh, combo finishers with her like first uh, combo attack. But even besides that, you can get a lot of positive uptime with it as long as you're using combo finishers as much as possible and taking advantage of your skill cooldowns. So you're still able to keep up pretty good uptime on this. And that is going to be one of your main goals as the character, to keep uptime on Phantasmagoria as much as you can. And that also allows you to use more pain trains if you can use your skill cooldowns even faster. So uh, there's a lot of really good positive benefits out of doing that and using your combo finishers. As far as her other four skills, they're a little bit more situational. We have Mehen, this will lay a trap that gets stronger. The damage cap itself does not get higher, but it does get stronger if you're not reaching that cap. And it flicks attack down when the attack is stabilized. All in all, this isn't really that useful. Attack minus 20% can be nice, but uh, the enemy has to intentionally walk over it after the trap has stabilized, so that makes it a little unreliable as an ability in most situations. Now, if you just place it on the enemy, it can explode immediately, but you will not get the attack down from it. So I would only really do this in specific uh, score attack challenge runs or something like that, because otherwise you're not going to get much benefit out of it. Reinforce is just a circle that restores allies HP. You don't really need this with everyone running Potion Hoarder right now, but uh, if you ever do need a healing ability, it is there, I guess. So it is something that exists and can be something that might be useful in the future. But for right now, I would not say it is the most useful ability. Disruption is a very fight specific, but it can be very useful depending on the fight you are in. This will remove one buff from foes in the blast radius, and it can be very nice to be able to remove buffs from foes to uh, kind of make it easier to fight them, especially if there's no easy way to remove them. Otherwise, you can remove some powerful buffs, buff effects from any any enemy in the game, which is really nice. And then we have Rise of Mata. This casts a circle that rescue allies from critical conditions, so this is just a raise ability. This actually can be a really nice skill to bring in general as well, especially if you're worried about dying a lot in a fight, because it can save on critical meteor and just be a really nice uh, party-wide effect to have, because there's no other way to do this in the game outside of just also running Potion Hoarder, which also can kind of trivialize this since everyone will get three revival potions. But if you die even more than that, if you're on a really bad team, this could be something to consider bringing. So 
Those are her skills. She has a nice mix of damage and supporting skills, and depending on the situation, a lot of them could be useful depending on what setup you are running and what you are playing with. In general, I like running this setup. Phantasmagoria is the main major buff ability I like running, and then I like running some damage and repositioning abilities outside of that, especially Pain Train. So this is what I would recommend for general use. If you want to be more supportive, you can definitely run some of those supportive options as well, though. As far as overmasteries, normal attack cap up is probably one of your biggest priorities. Uh, collapses the normal attacks, so that's something to keep in mind as well. And skill damage cap up can be really nice. Skill damage up itself is actually really nice for hitting the cap on uh, Pain Train a little bit easier. And then I have Skybound damage up, that's okay. It's not really the greatest effect in the world, but it is just something kind of nice to have. So there's some pretty nice traits to have. You do not need the critical hit rate because uh, Phantasmagoria exists, so I don't really have to worry about that on this character as much. As long as I can keep most uptime on that, it doesn't really matter too much if I have that or not. So it is nice to be able to just kind of ignore Phantasm or ignore critical hit rate in this one situation for this one specific character. Attack up could be nice as well, and maybe stun power, but these are probably going to be the main traits you want to focus on. Just uh, cap damage ups in most situations, just as per usual, because those are just some of the best effects you can get in the game from Overmastery. That should cover it as far as general setups. So let's get into some more practical gameplay application now. As per usual, here is a spoiler warning on some of the prod mode later game missions if you are worried about that. Let's get into it. So I'm going to showcase a couple different fights here. I don't think either of them were super well played, but I do think they showcase uh, kind of how you would approach the playstyle of the character. I start by activating Phantasmagoria since there's two of the Cagliostros in this room. We can actually keep 100% uptime if we're able to actually coordinate that, but... uh. Still, I'm going to play this as if I did not have that. I know it's hard to see my character because I'm hidden by the tail right there, but I just did a very quick uh, combo one into a finisher there into a collapse to get the defense debuff on the uh, dragon as well. So basically everyone should be hitting cap very, very easily no matter what at this point. I use a saw blade there and I use my uh, pain train when it is off cooldown and when I can to make sure I'm getting a bunch of benefit out of that. I do get hit there, which is pretty bad trying to uh, dodge with my nimble onslaught, but I was not able to land it. Not a big deal, though, because with the extra health I have and everything else, it doesn't really matter too much. Unfortunately, I'm staying in a slow field right now, which was not ideal. My pain train also kind of whiffs there, which was not ideal either, but, uh... Fortunately, uh... Able to get off a combo finisher there with, uh... To, uh, charge that up a little bit quicker, and now it's already a back off cooldown, and I can get another pain train off. The short cooldown of pain train is really nice, and, uh... You can decrease that even further by landing your combo finishers, which is also nice. Now that he's in the air, we're just going to be uh, kind of waiting at this point. I'm going to be trying to farm Invincibility and Nimble Onslaught, uh, Skill Cooldown, and uh, SPA Gauge Gain, which starts out going pretty well here. I missed that time, unfortunately. And I think I missed the last one, too, so I just stay out of range of his tail because I can't risk going in there and getting hit by that. And then I go in with Pain Train afterwards. Then it's kind of the same kind of combos as usual. I will be... Uh, Using my combo 1 and combo 3 finishers primarily, and failing dodges as well. Well, I trying to get more nimble on slot cooldown. Not a huge deal, though. Uh, I did activate my guts there, so that wasn't ideal. I go around the slow fields to behind him so I can easily kind of line up all of the combo 1s on him and uh, get as much benefit out of that as I can. I get a full uh, pain train off on him as well. I do end up dying, which was not ideal either, because I couldn't really see the attack. But that's my fault. And, uh... Once again, make sure to activate Phantasmagoria when it's off cooldown and I notice it's not up or uh, notice that uh, that it's been up for a while from maybe the other Cagliostro, so make sure we can have the uptime on that. And once we get the break here, the fight's pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, I've almost got my uh, SBA gauge up already, and uh, that's just kind of the benefit of the setup that I'm running here. I don't even have any uplift up, I just have the uh, Nimble Onslaught, and that's been one of the things that's helped get this up. I was holding on to it for now, I was waiting to enrage, but... Uh, uh, the Jeter just wants to go in here, so we just kind of end the fight here in general. We're able to kind of spam everything here, which is really nice. It is worth noting in Link Time, you can get a ton of pain trains off. Uh, if we don't get it in this fight, we kind of just end the fight right here. But if you can get into Link Time, it is one of those one way you can get a lot of damage just from spamming pain train over and over, since it's your highest damaging ability that you have, and uh, one of the best things you can do. But otherwise, here I'm just kind of spamming combo finishers in, collapse to uh, get as much damage as I can out of the end here. And we kind of just destroy the rest of this health bar without too much issue. Now, like I said, that could have been a better played by me in general. But uh, the main things you're going to be focusing on these fights are uh, keeping Phantasmagory up as much as you can, doing combo finishers to uh, reduce your skill cooldowns, using Collapse to keep the debuff, the, the defense debuff applied to enemies if people still aren't hitting caps with Phantasmagoria, or if Phantasmagoria is inactive, it helps people hit caps easier as well. 
And just in general, uh, stop putting as much damage as you can, maybe playing safe from range if you don't think you can dodge things effectively, but with Nimble Onslaught, sometimes you gotta play risky, and, um... Once again here, I go ahead and, uh, use Collapse, make sure I get the defense debuff early on in the fight, I use Phantasmagoria pretty early in the fight here, I save a little bit, I wanted to wait until after, uh... And get past kind of the initial phase there. Percival does end up dying, unfortunately. Not really a huge deal. A lot of my damage skills I just kind of use off cooldown because you don't really need to save them much for anything and you can get a lot of benefit out of damage here. Now, this enemy likes moving around a lot, so that's one of the benefits of uh, using the combo one here a lot because it has a lot of range and collapse can hit from across the field anywhere. I did end up getting targeted by the laser attack there over every other one character, so I do end up getting hit by that and having to activate guts early, which was also kind of unfortunate. Uh, I try to activate my double axes here, but he moves out of the way of the second uh, saw blade. Sorry, saw blades, not axes. It doesn't matter. We get the break off before he's able to go into a special attack, at least because of the sheer output of damage and uh, power we're doing right now, which is really nice. Uh, go ahead and charge collapse into a pain train there, but the pain train ends up with him because of the cutscene immediately after I activate it, which is really unfortunate. And uh, we go into his special attack here, which is... Uh, Another pretty easy way to normally farm a uh, Nimble Onslaught off of, for, but unfortunately I'm bad and got glaciated and died, but that's okay. I have Potion Hoarder, so it doesn't matter, but I get some invincibility right after I revive, so uh, worth it, right? That's the one negative thing about Nimble Onslaught. I noticed the Vein actually had this invincibility up the entire time, but that's the one negative thing about Nimble Onslaught is uh, if you do fail your dodges, you'll get punished for it, but that's probably the worth worthy trade-off for the bonuses it can offer if you actually do manage to land them. So, sometimes you end up dying. So after this, since I noticed that my allies don't have Phantasmagoria up right now, what I want to do is make sure I get the uh, combo finisher lets me activate that as soon as possible, and that's exactly what I do. Uh, I use Pain Train to uh, close the gap again, and I'm we're now at a point where we should pretty much be able to end the fight with uh, my SBA up. But he's going to use a special move again at 25%, no one else is kind of close. So what I do is wait to as close to 25% as I can before activating my SBA. I'm just kind of uh, paying attention to where his positioning is right now rather than doing damage because I just want to make sure that uh, I give as much time as I can to my teammates here. The drain actually ends up healing me there, which is pretty nice. The one kind of effect that I have is a weapon imbue. And that SBA kind of stalls him long enough for uh, us to get uh, Bane's SBA out so he doesn't go into a special attack one more time and waste more time in this fight. And we can kind of just easily end the attack from there with the damage we have. Now, we do enter Link Time at the very, very end there, and we could have spanned a bunch of Pain Trains if he had more health, but it doesn't really matter too much. In general, though, she's a pretty fun character, and uh, there isn't too much skill level involved. It's really just uh, knowing when to use your combo finishers, when to get the most benefit out of your skill cooldowns, keeping Phantasmagoria up time. Uh, if you're running a more supportive set, uh, try to keep those skills off cooldown when you need them as well. And just in general, just... Spamming collapse when you can, the skill cooldowns and everything like that. I hope you learned something from watching this video, and if you did, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and feel free to leave any feedback below. Sorry I was still a bit, a bit sick when making this, so uh, I sounded a little scatterbrained a bit during this video. I do apologize for that, but I do hope I covered everything in enough detail to explain how to play the character properly. Once again, thank you guys so much for the support. I do appreciate it. Uh, please look forward to all my future guides, and have a wonderful and blessed day, and hopefully I'll see you back here soon.